So uh, thank you all for coming today. I'm going to be talking about dinosaurs and how do we know what they ate. And I have to admit to a little bit of a lie on my title there, Jurassic Feasts. It should probably be more late Cretaceous Feasts. Sorry, my daughter has just fallen off the chair. <laughs> Um, yes, so most of the animals and the dinosaurs I'm going to be talking about today are probably more living around the late Cretaceous, from the Jurassic into that time. So, start off, what were the dinosaurs? So, dinosaurs, terrible lizard. Dinosaur means terrible lizard. They were reptiles that developed an upright gait, like the mammals, and they ruled the Earth for 160 million years, which is a really, really long time for a group of animals such as the dinosaurs to live. They're thought to be warm-blooded like birds. There's been a bit of controversy of whether they were cold or warm-blooded, but current research shows they were probably warm-blooded. And over a 1,000 species have been discovered so far, which is a huge amount. But some of these species, they're not big full skeletons. It's very rare to find a full skeleton of a dinosaur. And some dinosaurs are named purely from just one bone or even just one tooth. So there's still lots to find out about these dinosaurs. So when were they living? Well, I guess it's going to tell you a little bit about geological time. It is a very long period of time, 4.6 billion years. And the dinosaurs only lived a short portion of that, from the Triassic, middle of the Triassic, to the top of the Cretaceous when they were killed off and died out due to a number of factors. So they lived for 165 million years. Just to put that in context a little bit more, here's our humans. Homo sapiens, that's us, we've only been around for 200,000 years. So the dinosaurs have actually been around 85 times longer than we've been so far. So they really were a dominant creature for a very, very long time. So to think about time a little bit more as well, we're going to think of Stegosaurus versus T-Rex. These creatures would never, ever have actually met the Stegosaurus lived 150 million years ago, whereas our T-Rex, he lived 70 million years ago. So that was 80 million years apart. So they never would have lived near to each other. And here's my daughter Erin, who's just lost her tooth. So our human. We only lived 70 million years since the T-Rex. So we're actually closer in time to the T-Rex than the Stegosaurus and the T-Rex. It just makes you think about these time scales and what we're looking at. We're looking at really long periods of time that these dinosaurs were around for and how long ago they lived. So how do we know what they ate? Well, there's two main ways we can look at it. We can find fossils. Fossils can be a fantastic way of working out what dinosaurs might have eaten. And we can also look at the modern-day ancestors. We've got our crocodile here, so looking very dinosaur-like, very reptilian. And we've also got, this is a bird called a cassowary, which lives in Australia. And it really does look pretty prehistoric. Its colours, its head crest, its big dinosaur-looking feet. These are living relations of the dinosaurs. So by looking at them, what they look like, what they ate, how they ate, we can compare that to the dinosaurs that were living back in the Cretaceous and the Jurassic. So we've got three main things that we can look at. Teeth, I think someone said that, which is fantastic. Fossilised stomach contents. And poo. Yeah. Yeah. Poo is a really good indicator of what animals have eaten. And I'm going to show you a few more pictures about this in a little bit. But first of all, we're going to start off with teeth. So these are a few different dinosaur teeth. And you can see they come in all different shapes and sizes. And each of these teeth are from a different dinosaur. They come in different shapes, as I said. So very sharp, pointy ones, like this one here. Could be used for cutting. The top one there is slightly curved, and this one might have been for a semi-aquatic dinosaur, more suited to spearing fish. Got our grinding teeth, a bit like our molar teeth that we have in our mouth. We've got some teeth here which have been used for stripping. These are typically in our diplodocus, our sauropods, who would have stripped leaves off trees. And at the top there, we've even got snipping leaf dinosaurs, leaf-shaped teeth that have been perfect for snipping. So straight away, by looking at these different shapes of teeth, if we were to find one of these we can start to think a little bit about that dinosaur that it might have come from. So, it's big. It's a meat eater, because it was sharp and pointy. And it's probably two-legged. Someone mentioned earlier about the legs, a really good way that we can think about things, because four-legged dinosaurs typically ate plants, and two-legged dinosaurs were typically more predatory 
and um, would eat meat. And this is actually a T-Rex tooth. And one of the key things that my T-Rex arrow is pointing to there is a serration. It's a very fine serration on the T-Rex tooth that would be used to help really slice that meat that it was eating. And that's quite unique to this T-Rex tooth, where it is. So very clearly, we could found this tooth, we could say this is definitely from a T-Rex. And as I said, it's not often that you find a whole skeleton. You may sometimes only find one or two teeth, maybe not any other bones. So having this kind of information is really, really key. And there's our T-Rex there that he came from. But this isn't always the case. What kind of food do you think this animal ate? Shout it out for me. Meat. Meat. Yeah, it's got big, sharp teeth. Of course it probably ate meat. This is actually a modern-day animal. This is a flying fox, a type of bat, and it only eats fruit. So it's got these big, long teeth, which are great for tearing into maybe banana skins or something like that. But if we were to find that in the fossil record, we would have presumed it was a carnivore. So we have to be careful when we're looking at teeth that it may not always be the case. Sharp teeth don't always mean it ate meat. So we're going to move on to poo. Really, really important. So we find lots of teeth, but as I said, teeth don't always found with all the bones, so we may not know what animal it's come from, what dinosaur it's come from. But poo, however, can tell us a huge amount of things. So these are lots of different types of dinosaur poo, and in them we can find clues as to what the dinosaur's eaten. So in this one we've got fish scales and teeth just sticking out there. This one's got bone fragments. This is a bit of a T-Rex um, um, poo and you find bone fragments in there. Its jaws were so powerful, it would just crush bones up. So you find bone fragments in the poo. This one has wood fragments, and even dung beetle burrows. So this poo, after it had come out of the dinosaur, would also become a home for some of these insects that liked to, um, to live in the poo, or to, um, um, to eat it even. And instead of the herbivore poo, we can even find evidence of grass and pollen. And that's really key, because under the microscope, we can find exactly what tree or plant they were looking at. And that's given really big clues to um, paleontologists who are looking at plants to find out when exactly certain plants evolved. But here's our triceratops. Again, that's a great thing, but it's very rare that you find poo right next to the animal that's done it. And unfortunately, if you just find a bit of poo and no bones around it, we can tell if it's a herbivore or carnivore, but it's really difficult to tell which herbivore or carnivore that it's actually come from. So poo can tell us a lot, but not necessarily what that specific dinosaur ate. And finally, we move on to the fossilised stomach contents. Well, this is a dinosaur called Sinopaleopteryx, which was... got a little picture of it at the bottom there. About two metres in length, it was a bit like a raptor. Very sharp claws, very much a carnivore. And this fossil was found in China, where there's many, many amazing fossils with fantastic preservation, from everything from feathers that dinosaurs may have had, to skin impressions, to fossilised stomach contents, which is fantastic. And inside this particular dinosaur, if we go for a bit of a close-up, you can see here in the red, the blue and the yellow, a few different things. The blue is some feathers. And this probably comes from a feathered bird uh, that was around at the time of the um, dinosaurs called Confucisornis. I'm very bad at saying some of these long dinosaur words. I've had to write them down on here. The red is actually the hind leg of a smaller raptor dinosaur, so another carnivore in itself that this larger dinosaur has eaten. And the yellow blobs are what are known as gastroliths. Now, gastroliths are quite interesting because we actually find these in reptiles and birds that live today. And we also find them associated with the dinosaurs. They look like very polished stones. And dinosaurs would have eaten these for a number of reasons. Um, some of our herbivores, they didn't have teeth that could grind up plant material. So they would eat these stones in order to cause a kind of stone mill in their stomachs to help them to grind up that plant material, just like chickens eat grit today to grind up food in their gizzard. Other, um, um, other dinosaurs may have um, eaten stones, like the meat-eating dinosaurs, to help crush up any bones and things like that that they might have eaten. But it's something that we do find quite commonly associated with dinosaurs. 
And this is just a picture that just reconstructs that dinosaur there. So just from seeing what was in its stomach and the very well-preserved fossil that it was, showing feathers on it, we can see it here standing on the smaller raptor and then the other <coughs> picture eating the bird that we signed the feather bits of. So just by this amazing fossil, we can really reconstruct what this dinosaur looked like and what it was eating. But stomach contents are really, really rare. So we've got poo that doesn't necessarily help us unless we find it right next to the dinosaur that did the poo. We've got very rare stomach contents and teeth, which can be very, very useful in at least telling us how the dinosaur ate and whether it was a herbivore or carnivore. So we can also look at our modern ancestors. So here's our alligator and our cassowary there again. We've got a turkey at the bottom and also an iguanodon. And these hold really big clues as to what dinosaurs might have eaten. As I said, these guys had gastrolists as well. So by looking at how, why these animals ate gastrolists, we get an idea on why the dinosaurs were. I'll answer some questions at the end. Thank you. Teeth. We can look at the teeth. And I've just brought up a picture here of our crocodile teeth and our, um, our iguana teeth. And the iguana has very sharp little teeth that can be used to eat a lot of different fruits and things like that. So by looking at these tiny teeth, tiny sharp teeth that you might think are carnivorous, this is actually... Um, and iguana um, eats both meat and, and um, plant materials. So this is a clue that they may well have been um, omnivores within the dinosaurs. And finally, behaviour. This is a kimono dragon, and they actually worked in those teams to bring down much larger prey. Um, so again, by watching how they, how they um, uh, work together to do that can give us a clue as to the dinosaurs' behaviour as well. So I'm going to put you guys to the test. Now, I was hoping I'd be able to put my real dinosaur teeth up on here, but I've put some pictures on instead. So I'm going to show you guys some pictures of some teeth. I'm going to show you some dinosaurs, and you guys are going to tell me which dinosaurs you think these teeth have come from. Now you're all experts from what we've been talking about. So this is our first tooth here. Now, I've got some of these that you guys can have a look at and get your hands on um, in real in the break. And here's our dinosaurs. So we've got our T-Rex. We've got our Diplodocus, we've got a Spinosaurus, we've got our Triceratops, and right at the top there we've got Edmontosaurus, which is a Hadrosaur. So which of these dinosaurs do you think that tooth came from? Can I have hands up for T-Rex? Anyone think that comes from a T-Rex? Got a few? Anyone thinks it might come from a Spinosaurus? Got a few there. Does anyone think it might have come from our Triceratops? Oh, no one for Triceratops. What about our hadrosaur, our duck-billed dinosaur? Anyone think it might come from that? And what about our diplodocus? <laughs> oh, I think that's a resounding yes. Fantastic. You guys have been learning well. This is from our diplodocus. So our diplodocus, he had around about 40 teeth, which would sit at the front of his mouth. And his teeth, so is my diplodocus mouth, would work by pulling off, stripping the leaves off the tree. But he didn't have any chewing teeth. So this is one of the dinosaurs that would have used the gastrolus in his stomach to help break down that plant material. And a little bit of a picture of the poo there we can see. Inside the poo, we've got our, um, our pollen. So we can tell exactly what type of tree or what type of plant this Diplodocus was eating. This is Spinosaurus on this thread. Now, Spinosaurus is a really interesting dinosaur. He had these long teeth, if I move on to here. Get these the right way around, sorry about that. So he had 64 teeth, a few more than our Diplodocus. And they were very sharp, very curved, perfect for spearing and catching fish. As this animal was, or dinosaur was believed to be semi-aquatic. There's a picture up here of what his sorts of looked like as he swam along <laughs> piercing his fish. He also had a big long whippy-like tail. And this is thought to be a little bit like a modern day thresher shark who would beat the water, which would stun the fish or herd them up so it could then eat them all up. So our Spinosaurus, just by the shape of its tooth and how long and thin and curved it is, can tell us that it's probably a semi-aquatic animal. Now let's hope I've got this the right way around this time. Aha! Our final tooth. So have we got any votes on that one for the T-Rex? Any votes for our Triceratops? few on the triceratops and what about our hadrosaur our edmontosaurus well done guys you've been learning well i'm very impressed this is from our duck billed dinosaur right at the top there our edmontosaurus and he had as many as 980 teeth 
Now, not teeth like we have. They weren't all crammed in, but they were actually in columns around his mouth. As you can see from oh, this picture here, it looks a bit like a pine cone. So his teeth were in columns and rows, and they'd be used to grind forwards and backwards the material that he ate. Now, because this dinosaur had a duck bill, which would have been really good for plucking leaves and bits of plant material off, not that long ago, 50, 60 years ago, it was believed these animals actually lived in the water. And I've put in this picture from a 1970s dinosaur book of these, these dinosaurs swimming around very much like ducks. But it's not the case. These animals were fully terrestrial. They ate plants, and we've got evidence of that, again, from coprolites, stomach contents, and that kind of thing. There's been some fantastic fossils found of their stomach contents. <coughs> and over in the corner here, I've got a picture of some conifers. And they typically ate conifers, and there's been a lot of the needles found within the coprolites and within the stomach contents of these particular dinosaurs. There is a lot more, but I'm afraid that is another story. I could talk about dinosaurs for hours, but unfortunately we do have to move on to the next couple of talks for this evening. If you guys do have any questions at all, then I would love to hear them, and I'll be out in the break with the dinosaur teeth for you guys to have a proper touch and a feel of. So many thanks.